So this right here is a 3D printed wireless rechargeable mouse that weights only 53 grams. This is how I made it. First part of the project was of course the 3D printing. The design of this mouse is made by a 3D designer named Amatoma. He has a listing for the files on Etsy and he has included many variations so you can choose which one you like the most. All variations are available as solid shell or a honeycomb design like the Ultralight 2. The printing process was fairly easy but really time consuming. I'd say it took like 8 hours total to print these parts but almost all the prints came out fine. The backside button was the only one causing some problems as I could not get it to print properly due to some printer limitations and the shell had some imperfections due to some insufficient supports created by yours truly. After the printing I sanded the shell and the mouse buttons with wet sanding paper starting from 400 grit all the way up to 1000 and finished with some spray matte clear coating. About the electronics, this mouse is designed to use the PCB of the Logitech G305. It is the favorite mouse of mouse mothers. It has the really really good hero sensor from Logitech. It is battery powered so it is really easy to use with mods. To power up this mouse I use the Enco battery mod kit with a random micro USB port resourced from a USB extension cord. The first part of the assembly is to install the switches to the new 3D printed housings and solder them to a JST connector. You can use the stock Omron switches if you want, but I chose to go with my favorites, the Kale 8.0s. After that, you put the power button to the base plate and just fit the PCB to the base plate and screw it in. Some parts may need some light filing and sanding to get the PCB flush with the base plate. After the PCB is in place, put the side button PCB to the socket and plug it in. Then you can plug in the power system of your choosing and test the mouse with the power button. Then we can move on to the top shell. The deep the DPI button rod is inserted to the DPI button and the rod then inserted to the slot in the shell. The mouse buttons are screwed into the shell with four screws and the fitment is really nice. The side buttons caused some problems for me like I said and the back button snapped in half. However, I later managed to fix the side button with super glue. Then the final part of the assembly is just to snap the top shell to the bottom starting from the front and screw it in place. Then the next part is just to install the mouse gates of your choosing to the bottom of the mouse. Pro tip, the middle piece of the sensor ring of your carpet sets you never use is a really good mouse gate for these kind of projects. I used three of those in this mouse. I would have used four but I only had three. I also decided to install some self-cut lizard skin grips to improve my grip with the mouse and also to protect the baby blue color of the mouse from the sweat of my hands. So this is the final mouse about the build quality. It is obviously the best because I made it. But no joking, there's no side flex as you would expect that there would be some side flex because this is a 3D printed mouse. The side buttons are kind of mushy and mouse clicks have post travel. But it is a 3D printed mouse so let's cut it some slack and the maker as well. Overall, the design is really good and it feels really rigid. The mouse weights only 53 grams without the lizard skins, so it is extremely lightweight. Weight balance is centered. The mouse is small, really small. The shape is based on the shape of the Final Mouse Ultralight 2, but is actually smaller. The length of the mouse is 113 millimeters and the width from the grip part is 55 millimeters. And the mouse is only 32 millimeters tall. So there is almost no hump on this bad boy and it needs to hit the legs more. If you compare it to, for example, something like the G Pro Super Light, you can see the difference in the sensor position. Also, if we compare it to something like the M42, which I really like, you can see the sensor is almost at the same position, but it is a lot smaller in size. Okay, so about the performance of the mouse. At first, I felt like I could not possibly use a mouse this small. Mainly because the hump is a lot lower than on my M42, which I mostly use. But after an adjustment period of about two days, I started to hit some really nasty one clips and I started noticing some weird things happening in Kovac routines I do. At the same time I was testing the Vanser Ice mouse pad which is really fast glass infused mouse pad and noticed that in combination with the mouse this light and small 
I could still maintain a good level of stopping power in click timing scenarios and even hit my new high score in Tile Frenzy. Then I started to break my high scores in all the tracking based scenarios I do. The biggest things that I needed to adjust to was the somewhat low sensor position in collaboration with the extremely low hump. But after that, I seemed to perform really well with this mouse, which kind of surprised me. All in all, this mouse was really fun to build. I think I'll continue testing this and report back a few months from now how the shape has been treating me and all that. So here are some Apex clips for your enjoyment with this mouse. Well, yeah, thanks for watching. Like the video if you found it interesting. Goodbye.